Let's begin the installation of the UH-330B with the electrical connections. Located on the back of the machine, toward the bottom, there is a slot cutout that serves as the entry point for the electrical supply. The terminal block for the machine is located in the front. To get to the terminal block, you must first take off the lower front panel. After removing the lower front panel, the terminal block will be located at the bottom right of the cabinet. To access it, remove the nut from the circuit board junction box and gently swing it out of the way. Then remove the terminal block screw and cover. You will see on the terminal block labels L1, L2, L3, and N for neutral. Notice that L3 is only used with a three-phase machine. The UH-330 single-phase machine uses a four-wire connection, two hot wires, a dedicated neutral wire, and a ground wire. Single-phase is the standard wiring, but the machine can be converted in the field if necessary. The third phase is pre-wired at the main terminal block. However, the booster heater jumpers must be repositioned and the third phase booster heater wire stored near the booster must be connected to the element. The three phase machine uses a five wire connection, three hot wires, a dedicated neutral wire, and a ground wire. The conversion instructions are located on the back of the front panel, as well as a new data plate. It must be placed over the old data plate on the front panel when the conversion is complete. Also, be sure to notify the manufacturer that the machine has been changed to three-phase. Now, we will be installing the UH-330B's water connection. An important feature of this machine is the fact that it does not need a hot water connection. It uses cold water and has a built-in heat recovery system. Note that it uses a three-quarter inch garden hose connection that you will use to screw onto your cold water supply. There is no PRV required for this machine. However, the cold water supply must provide a minimum of 25 PSI, up to a maximum of 95 PSI flowing pressure measured at the machine. Moving on to the drain hose connection. The drain hose is secured to the back of the machine with metal clamps to maintain an anti-siphoning loop in the hose. The clamps must never be removed, nor the drain hose straightened or stretched. Note the hose barb tie wrapped on the drain hose. When installing the drain hose, use this hose barb and screw it into a vented Y fitting, provided by others. If connecting to a floor drain, be sure to secure the hose above the drain, maintaining a minimum air gap of one inch between the drain hose outlet and the rim of the floor drain. Now let's talk about the chemical connections. The machine comes equipped with a rinse aid and a detergent dispensing pump, stiffener tubes, and clear tubing. The tubing is marked with a label to identify the type of chemical it is dispensing. Chemical containers should be placed as close to the machine as possible and do not elevate the containers above the floor. Simply place the tubes inside the containers of each chemical and prime the machine. The chemical pumps must be primed whenever a chemical container is changed. Now that the chemical tubes are secured in the proper containers, press up on the prime button. You will hear the detergent pump activate. If you open the door, you can also see the detergent entering the machine through a black fitting located on the right wall. The UH-330 also comes with a rinse aid pump. Rinse aid is injected through a fitting located on the front of the booster tank. To prime the rinse aid pump, press down on the prime button. Once more, you will be able to hear a pump activate. To check that the rinse aid is entering the machine, watch the clear rinse aid tubing going into the booster. When you see air bubbles moving in the tubing, hold the prime button for an additional minute and then release. The pumps were set at the factory, but chemical supplies vary, so it's best to have a chemical supplier make the final pump adjustments to match the supplied chemicals. Pump adjustment screws are located on the side of the timer board junction box. Simply turn the respective chemical adjustment screws clockwise to increase or counterclockwise to decrease the pump speeds. Now we're going to point out some of the components in this machine. Remove this nut and swing the timer board housing to the side. Now remove the screw that holds the pump bracket in place and swing it open as well. Here we have the chemical pumps. Further in, we can see the water valve and behind this cover is the circuit board. Upon removing the circuit board cover, take note that this machine uses a six amp fuse. This fuse will protect the board from damage. We also ship an extra fuse with the machine. 
Now let's talk about high limits. There are two high limits on the UH-330B. The first is the wash tank high limit. It can be found on the front of the wash tank. The second is the booster high limit, located on the top of the booster tank. Check the high limits during initial installation in case one tripped during shipment. Moving on, next we have the booster contactor that controls the heat for the booster. We have the drain diverter valve located here in the center of the machine. This acts as the drain valve and diverts the water for your wash cycle. Toward the back of the machine, we have the wash pump that pumps the water to the upper and lower wash arms. We have the final rinse pump connected at the bottom of the wash tank. Using this built-in pump, we can maintain 20 PSI during the final rinse, regardless of the incoming water pressure. Though not visible from the front, but accessible from the rear of the machine, there is the drain pump that pumps water out of the machine during the drain cycle. Finally, we have the detergent and rinse aid pumps. You will see these pumps activate during chemical priming. Here you can see the back of the pumps.